All right, so today's reading for history, and I'm going to put that on the top of this, um, but this is today's reading for history. It's actually not history so much as it is social sciences. Uh, part of uh, what you should be learning about as a sixth grader and on through the years is certain types of jobs that there are available in different situations. And this is a book about genetics at work and different kinds of jobs that are in, available in the genetics field. There's some fascinating information in this. So um, I hope that when you go through this, you think maybe there's something there that's interesting to me. So take your time, check your stuff, check your work, and think about what it is that you might be interested in doing. Alleles, captive breeding, Characteristics, chromosomes, DNA, enzymes, genes, genetics, genus, hybridization, inherited, propagate, selective breeding, sterile, and traits. These are the different kinds of jobs. They actually talk about the introduction, but they, the jobs are like farming, um, animal breeding, animal zoos, solving crimes, health. Then there's a conclusion, some explore more, glossary and index. But just so you know, these are some real great jobs in this area. And if you did not know this, a lot of these people, even during the quarantine, are still working. That doesn't mean everything is going easily for them. It just means that a lot of them are still working, especially in the healthcare business, obviously. Introduction. Do you sometimes wonder what you want to be when you grow up uh, every day? How have, have you ever thought about being a doctor or a detective? Or maybe you want to work with animals on a farm or in a zoo or raise your own dogs? There is one thing you may not have thought about that all these jobs have in common. Genetics. What is genetics? Think about all the members of your family. Do you notice any similarities? Perhaps you have the same hair color, or many of you have long fingers or small toes. And things like hair color and body shape are traits that can be passed down to you from your grandparents and your parents, sometimes skipping a generation or two. So when someone says you inherited your eyes from your mother, they mean your mom pro your mom passed that trait down to you. Genetics is the field of science that studies how all living things pass on these traits through genes until you are sorry units of heredity that determine traits in all living things. Scientists once thought that humans had about two million genes, but since human gene chromo genome project begin its research in the 1990s that number has been revised to about 24,000 that's a little more than the number of genes in a chimpanzee but not as many as scientists first thought alleles are different versions of genes Many genes have two alleles. For example, one allele of a gene will pass on brown eyes and another will pass on blue eyes. Other genes have three or more alleles. I'm going to type that in and just make sure I'm saying it right because I cannot remember if that's exactly how you say it. A L L E L E S. And here's what it says. A Leo. So, I'm right. Um, we'll pass on brown eyes and another will pass on blue eyes. Other genes have three or more alleles. For example, the alleles for blood type are A, B, and O. Do you know your blood type? I wonder what my blood type is. I'm going to ask my doctor. She can tell me. 
Genes are made of dirox dioxide ribonucleic acid, which is DNA, which is the code for your body to make the things that it needs, such as enzymes for food, digestion and pigment for eye color. DNA forms itself into shapes that are called chromosomes. Each cell in the human body has 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother and 23 from the father. It is the culmination of chromosomes from both parents that make who you are. You may be wondering what kind of, what you may be wondering what being a detective and raising dogs have to do with genetics. You will soon find out that genetics has a lot to do with these jobs and others including farming, animal breeding, curing diseases, preventing potential illnesses, solving crimes, and more. I'm glad that there's so many things that you can do in a certain area. <clears throat> farming. Although genetics is a new science, there is evidence of people using genetic techniques to create better crops and animals as early as 5000 BC. Many of these simple techniques are still used today. Selective breeding is one of these techniques. This technique involves scientists selecting plants with characteristics that they like, such as quick growing or attractive fruit, to breed with other plants that have those same characteristics or other desirable trait characteristics. By selective, selectively breeding these plants, scientists ensure that the plant's good traits are passed on to, the, to create crops that grow faster and produce better fruit or have other characteristics they like. Most of the food that we eat have been genetically modified, either through breeding or technology. I took a class and they said that even selective, like selecting fruit to produce is actually genetically modifying it, which I don't, I mean, I understand, I just don't agree with, when I think of genetically modifying, I'm thinking of like more careful, technology type stuff. Think about the types of tomatoes that you can buy at the supermarket. These varieties are a result of the selective breeding of tomato plants. Some common characteristics that scientists try to propagate are faster growing and more plentiful crops, better color and taste, durability and resistance to disease. Wheat, soybeans, and corn are other common crops that, have, that are grown using genetic techniques. In the future, scientists hope to have even more control over crops. With the help of genetics, farmers will be able to grow plants for us to eat that have higher protein, lower oil, and the ability to grow faster and prevent it previ than previous versions. Is this the best though? Is this necessary? I know there's a lot of waste. I know if it doesn't look right, they give them to these companies that dispose of or do stuff with food because they don't look right. A lot of food is wasted. Scientists also use genetic techniques with animals. For example, they use genetic breeding techniques to create chickens that lay more eggs. They produce pigs and cattle that contain meat with more or less fat, depending on how people like it. They create cows that grow faster and produce more milk. They haven't yet figured out how to get them to produce chocolate milk, but they're probably working on it. Okay, that's groupy. And funny. I mean, because I think they're, from hope, I hope to God they're joking, because that would be horrible. <laughs> Why don't they just have chickens lay chocolate eggs then? Genetics sounds like a great thing for farming. Why wouldn't people want crops that grow faster and taste better? Cows that produce poor milk and meat that's low in fat. Well, some say that genetically altering crop, crops and animals stand, damages their, can, will damage their genetic diversity. By only breeding for a select group of traits, many other useful traits may be lost forever. The lack of genetic diversity among crops and animals may also leave them vulnerable to a single virus that could wipe out an entire species. Oh my stars. Wow. What happens when you crossbreed two entirely different species of animals, like 
a dog and an elephant. Do you get barking elephants or dogs with trunks? This type of interspecies breeding is quite complex and might seem ridiculous, but scientists are currently experimenting with crossbreeding different species. Oh, please be careful. Some people are worried that these creations might have a negative effect on the environment and people. I would agree. I would, that would be me. I don't necessarily think that that's the best thing to do. All right, for less than learning for today for our social sciences lesson, um, lots of jobs out there. Make sure you guys uh, get your four to six facts and have a great day.